at first you think it's just so that they could collect transaction fees, right? If you're just using third-party platforms, they don't really have anything to do with that. They have no control over that. They don't get any money from that. That makes sense. I mean, they'd like to get a transaction fee off of each one, um, you know, every time you send or receive money. But I think that's too simple of an answer, right? I think that would just be scratching the surface. Now, we've seen in, in recent months, Twitter has announced their intention to compete with pretty much every other platform. Uh, they're all competing with each other, right? Zuckerberg just launched a Twitter uh, competitor, um, and Twitter wants to compete with them. So, like, Twitter has been prioritizing videos, for example, which is obviously a move to start competing against YouTube. Twitter has also announced their intention to compete with Instagram, TikTok, um, well, and YouTube by posting long form video content images. Um, and also we've seen that Meta has been investing heavily in its shopping features, such as shops and live shopping. With shops, it allows businesses to create an online storefront in their, you know, in their own Facebook profile and Instagram apps. And live shopping allows businesses to host live video events where users can shop for products. Now, I haven't personally used that or participated in that, but I have a little brother who sells um, Pokemon cards, and he does that um, not on uh, obviously not on Twitter yet, but I think he does it on TikTok and some other platforms where like he'll live stream for like six or eight hours a day, and people just tune in all day as he does these unboxing. He opens up packs of cards. And he, he makes a lot of money, which is interesting because that wasn't like on my job checklist when I was a kid, like uh, sell Pokemon cards online. Uh, it was like doctor, lawyer, fireman. I didn't, I didn't have that option. Um, but uh, these, are, these are big things, and it looks like he wants to compete with that, compete with Meta, Instagram doing that, compete with TikTok that's doing that. Because um, TikTok has been investing heavily into these shopping features. Um, they allow business to sell products directly from within their TikTok app as well. And they've been working on, TikTok's been working on a new feature called Checkout that would allow users to buy products directly from within the TikTok app. So what does this mean? Well, they want to do it inside the app. Think about this. Um, you might have ever gotten a Starbucks card at one point. I know for whatever reason, my wife loves to put money on her Starbucks card. So when she goes to Starbucks, she just shows them her little QR code and she could just pay without having to give them her credit card. I think like, I mean, just hand over the credit card. It's the same difference, right? But she likes to do that. And apparently so do lots of other people. As a matter of fact, I was looking at some numbers this morning and it looks like Starbucks is sitting on roughly $2 billion of what we'd call float. Float is what insurance companies use to make a lot of money. You pay insurance companies money for your premiums, but you don't need that money back right away. You don't have a claim right away. So they hold that money until they have to pay out on claims. But it's what they do with that money in the meantime, that the float, what they do with it, well, they invest it and they make a lot of money. When you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars, even just a few days of float can make a lot of money. So Starbucks geniusly created this program where now users like my wife have given them money to sit on their card, the float. And it's about $2 billion. So if TikTok or Instagram or now X want to do the same thing and allow you what X is doing as a, as a money transmitter is now I can put money into the X app so that then I can spend it directly out of the app for different types of things. And remember what I said is like to, to make money on the transaction fee, I think is too small minded. He wants $2 billion worth of float. I mean, shoot, I'll take $2 billion worth of float. Maybe I should come up with a way to do that as well. Of course he wants that. Now, we also know that Musk wants to have basically an everything app where there's news, social media, messaging, pictures, videos, payments, shopping, all of that inside of, of the entire app. I mean, he's talked about it in China. I've never been to China, uh, but they have an app called WeChat. And WeChat basically has everything in there from calling your Uber to ordering your food to having your banking to making your payments to your, you know, chatting, your video. All of that is all built in. Now, if, if Twitter does roll this out, who are they competing against? Well, they'd be competing against other custodial wallets. So right now I can store my Bitcoin on my own and I could send it over Twitter, but using a third, uh, using my own third party app. So they don't have control, but if Twitter takes control, they want to store my cryptocurrency for me. Then I'm competing against other custodial wallets, including Coinbase, Binance, Gemini, Kraken, things like that. 
And all of those are actually sort of crypto marketplaces because I can go there and I can trade one cryptocurrency for another. Now I can't trade cryptocurrency for like a physical object, not right now, not on any of those, but I can trade crypto for each other. So maybe he also wants to allow you to trade cryptocurrencies. We don't know that part. We don't know that part yet. That's a little bit of speculation. Maybe it could be more like this company Paxful that allowed you to um, pair up with somebody looking for one asset with another. So maybe um, you have a Home Depot gift card and I have some crypto and we can meet up and I can, I can buy your Home Depot um, gift card with my crypto. Maybe it's something like that. We don't really know the answer to that, but what we do know is that the, the payment piece is coming on board. Now, he could also try to be competing with the more of the traditional finance. We call it TradFi network like PayPal, um, which, of course, he's been wanting to take on PayPal since the beginning. Now, we know that MasterCard has been closing partnerships with Binance, a crypto exchange, trying to expand its footprint in the crypto space. So we see that. So we're starting to see this creep of traditional finance, TradFi, creeping into the digital asset space, PayPal, et cetera. And we can see that digital assets are being transferred faster than fiat. As a matter of fact, um, we can see that stable coins, which are US dollar backed stable coins, a crypto backed by dollars, settled over $11 trillion on the blockchain last year in 2022. And it was almost the same as Visa's vol transaction volume of 11.6. So think about that. With just in a decade, we're now seeing just dollar stable coins, not crypto overall, just stable coins doing about as much volume as Visa did. Now, if stable coins are competing with Visa, what happens when Twitter, what, what happens when Twitter with about 450 million users has immediate access to their stable coins, which can complete a transaction faster than fiat does? Well, the answer is people would slowly use the fiat rails less and less and less and opt into the faster network. Now, I'd also just mention that PayPal just recently launched a stable coin. It hasn't taken off super big. I mean, it's, it's been out just recently. I think they've somehow got it to about $40 million, something like that. But don't you think Elon Musk wants to beat PayPal out? The company that kind of took over his original vision that he never got to build, now he's finally building his vision. And if PayPal steps in and moves into the stable coin space, I mean, he has to do it. It's a pretty obvious next step, I would think. Uh, potentially having a Twitter bank, right? It's just like how PayPal stores people's money, Twitter could store people's money, right? It, it, if he has the money, if we're storing our money there, then it allows for these payments and deposits to be made, operating basically as a bank. Now, if we step back and remove digital assets and social media and look at this from first principles, we can see it's a bank. We can see that. Uh, so this is where it's going. Um, a WeChat, a payment chat. Um, but if he doesn't fall in line, we're going to have to see, we'll probably see more and more crackdowns from the DOJ, the SEC, the FTC. <clears throat> and it's going to be very, very interesting to watch this play out. 